Hello everybody and welcome to Ancestors Legacy. Ancestors Legacy is an upcoming real-time strategy game from Destructive Creations, the team behind the brutal shoot 'em up hatred. The game is set during the Middle Ages and aims to reflect the harsh realities of medieval warfare, with combat being your main means to achieving your goals. The game is scheduled for early 2018 with no current price point on Steam and offers a single player campaign where you can play as four playable nations and also includes multiplayer battles. The game offers story based scenarios akin to an Age of Empires rather than a grand strategy type campaign. For this preview the build offered three missions that introduced the game's mechanics over time. Essentially the game deals with squad based combat and resource management combined with a violent medieval setting with up close combat for an immersive experience. In the first mission, Ulf Ironbeard was blown off course by a storm while invading the Kingdom of Northumbria. They land near the Anglo-Saxon town of Bambara which is heavily fortified. After assaulting the camp and burning it to the ground, Ulf is eventually overpowered by a counter-attack and forced to retreat into the woods with what little remains of his army. This mission introduced some basic principles, but also revealed that there's a wide variety of depth when it comes to each unit. Units have a facing direction, meaning they can be flanked from the sides or rear. They also have morale, breaking when surrounded or facing overwhelming odds, and attack stances switching from aggressive to defensive. Certain units also have skills, such as raise shields for missile protection, or chase to quickly pursue enemies in a burst of speed. Units also have stat modifiers on their emblems that let you know what effects are present, and also have a veterancy system where they can rank up and choose a path of what strengths they take. On top of this, hero characters like Ulf have wider area of effect buffs like fear or rage, buffing or debuffing combat and morale around them. It's pretty cool, and though the skills may seem a bit arcadey, I actually feel like they're fairly grounded and more reflective of micromanaging a unit's personal skills rather than being magic abilities. The hero skills are a little bit more magical, but again you could say that a man like Ulf would strike fear in the enemy, so I think that they're well implemented and it adds a deeper layer to the combat while you're engaged. The second mission continued the story, where you had small squads and had to explore the environment to find food to replenish your men. This mission introduced line of sight and stealth, focusing on a small set of units that had to remain undetected to succeed. Units are able to hide in tall grass where they can perform ambushes, and also destroy and set fire to buildings to distract enemies away from their usual paths. The line of sight system is good, and the stealth mechanics in the game are fine, though I didn't really enjoy this mission as much as the others. It took me around 20 minutes to beat, so I think it was just a little bit long and drawn out. The voice acting and in-game cutscenes where you find and free your allies gave great context to the mission, but as this is a base building, resource managing and army fighting game, I don't think stealth was too well suited to the gameplay. However, it did serve a purpose in the story, and by the end, we had gathered supplies to allow us to rebuild our strength and prepare an ambush for the Northumbrians. The final mission for this preview build was a much more sandbox experience that primarily dealt with resource management, buildings and multi-camp organisation. You have three resources to manage, wood, food and iron. Food depletes depending on the amount of units you have as they consume it over time. The best way to manage this at the beginning is to keep as few units as possible while you're building so that you stockpile the food. Then when you're ready to attack you recruit up quickly as they'll burn through your stockpile. If you run out of food, your troops take morale penalties and stat penalties, so they're not fighting at full strength. An army marches on its stomach, after all. After pushing your way into a bigger camp, you burn it to the ground and raise your own town centre there, taking control of the peasants in the area. Settlements act as a sort of centralised hub that then connect to each resource site. To link up the resources to the hub, you just need a small amount of wood. You don't ever actually recruit a peasant unit for instance, rather just connect the resources and peasants will go there and do the work. There's predetermined lumber mills and farms around that link to certain settlements. Once you connect them up, they'll start supplying your base with the resources. If those external sites get raided, you'll lose your resource, and if you lose your town building, you've lost your hub and all resources that are connected to. Interestingly, there's multiple mini towns to take over in this mission, which have neat defensive choke points in high ground, which allow for the placement of traps and defenses.
I'm not sure how multiplayer works, but if there's large open maps like this with several resource camps dotted around, I think this could be an extremely fun multiplayer real-time strategy game that takes cues from Company of Heroes with map-based resources with its own unique spin on combat and supply lines. I just saw from the loading screen tooltips that there can also be teams where teams will share resources and be able to recruit from each other's camps, so I'm very excited to know more about that. The building system is super simple. You just click to build what you want and once you're gaining all resources, you've essentially maxed out what you can achieve. Resources don't run out, so the game is about maintaining supply and fielding the maximum amount of units you can withstand. For me, I was able to field 8 units and 2 heroes at my largest, which is 82 men. So the battles don't seem to be that big really, but comparable to something again like a company of heroes. Recruitment is pretty much the same as building. In the preview build, all units just come out of your home base building and are recruitable very quickly. So if you get your army wiped out, you can refill them pretty fast. But I think veterancy will make a large difference to how they perform in combat. And of course, resource management will keep you alive. Combat seems quite good. Microing units is made easy thanks to the army stances and grouping controls, allowing you to hotkey combinations of units. The combat itself also looks pretty nice. There are some clipping issues as all of these war games seem to have, but there's also a ton of cool kill animations and there's a cinematic camera that lets you get down to the ground to watch the combat, but I couldn't work out how to do it in the preview. There also seems to be a good variety of units. There's axemen, swords, spears, scouts, heroes, slingers and archers, and I'm sure there's probably more, but that's all I've seen in the preview so far. Once I made my final attack across a trap-ridden ravine, I actually lost, and the AI made a counter-attack with a small force raising my resource hub. The villagers in the town were mercilessly slaughtered before we captured it back, and I made one final assault on the ravine and into the final enemy camp. So that's pretty much it for this preview of Ancestor's Legacy. The game is looking extremely polished so far, and I'm genuinely pretty hyped for it. I like the dark and bloody vibe from the game, though I wish they kept the greyish aesthetic from the trailer for the night battles. Instead, they opted for a more bluish hue. Essentially, the game plays like Company of Heroes 1 in terms of how you field and manage units, but also has a rather unique style of resource management that seems to focus on small raids of camps to whittle down your enemy's resources, really lending itself to the Viking theme. I can't really think of anything negative, other than the fact that the stealth stuff didn't really interest me, and I'm not a huge fan of the UI in the bottom right specifically. I think the unit icons and banners look great, but the bottom right panels with their green and red glows just seem to not really fit in with the aesthetic too much. The cutscenes, voice work and animations are awesome, you can really tell it's the boys behind Hatred. The combat flows well, the controls are responsive and the UI is quite functional with support for controllers as well. Anyway guys, that's it for me, this game is around 6 months until its release, so I appreciate the devs sending it my way this early. Let me know what you think of it and if you'd be interested to see more as the game progresses and I'll do my best to cover it. That's all for me and I'll see you in the next one. And let's hope to meet again. This life. Enough.